I would look for alternative data for each one of your uh, sectors, specific sectors. For mobile app data, we see the same use cases still working, but innovation is what matters. So we're continuing to take our data for quants and find ways to have that signal happen more frequently. And then for our fundamental investors, we're trying to find ways to go deeper on the customer experience to get the insights and answer the questions they want. Yeah, with web data, the outlook is bright. Everyone needs web data to train their AI. Um, and they need web data that's collected in the right way to make sure that AI is sustainable and defensible five years down the road. Thank you. I, I agree with Sarah a lot. Responsible AI, and, and it, it's exciting, these technologies, the transport and the shipping, the digital apps. Like, I could see so many areas to innovate with that. So I will just say that um, from my perspective, the big frontier is going to be unstructured data combined with structured data through conversational interfaces. And you're going to need to make sure you have the rights for that data. You're going to have to make sure that the data is of sufficient quality. Um, and then you're going to want to have it distributed in a way that's, you know, easily integratable. So there's a lot of exciting things ahead for alternative data for investors. So one of the things that investors are always looking at, banks, um, the government agencies, OPEC, are supply and demand balances. And certainly um, that's what we can show in a, in a, in a real-time way, what the, the supply and the demand will be in, in, in more of a realistic function. So typical supply and demand balances will be uh, demand minus supply supply at the moment, at the month, at the given time period, but realistically, supply moves around in a much different format. It could arrive four months later. So we can really give a good idea of what the real term supply and demand balances are doing and thus the fundamental analysis behind it.